Majority Whip. Mr. President, it's been my good fortune to serve in the United States Senate for several terms in the House before. I can remember this chamber from my first visit when I sat in that gallery as a college student and watched the proceedings of the United States Senate. And I can remember so many historic days that I've been blessed to have a front, front row seat to observe. Great memories. But in addition to those great memories, there is one sad memory. No, it was more than sadness. One memory that brings sadness and anger. And it related to January 6th of this year. I remember that day so well. The Vice President of the United States, Mike, Michael Pence, was presiding over the United States Senate. We were counting the electoral votes to determine the official outcome of the previous election. And the President of the United States, Donald Trump, was holding a rally near the White House, not far from Capitol Hill. The demonstrators who came to his rally then marched on this Capitol. And what transpired after that was historic and shameful. I remember the moment when the Vice President of the United States was spirited off that platform. They yanked by his arms out that door. Clearly, his security detail felt that his life was in danger, and they removed him. And I remember a member of the Capitol Hill Police coming, standing on the podium in the front of the Senate and saying that we should remain in our seats, that this was going to be a safe place, this room, the Senate chamber. And then they started bringing in the staff who were gathered around the chamber to stand along the walls because of the safety of this circumstance. So we knew there was something happening in the Capitol. Minutes later, just minutes later, that same Capitol Hill policeman announced, evacuate this room as fast as you can, as quickly as you can, move off this scene and go to another place. I never thought that I would see that in the United States Capitol building, nor in the chamber of the United States Senate, but it was a reality. As we quickly moved out through the exits, all the senators and the staff, I remember looking out the window and seeing hundreds of people descending on the Capitol. That was the snapshot in my mind as we quickly escaped the danger in the United States Capitol building. We know at the end of the day that at least five people lost their lives. We know that 140 law enforcement were assaulted by this mob that tried to take control of the Capitol during the Electoral College count. And, of course, there's ample historic evidence of what happened. Videotapes galore. Videotapes from every angle. Information gathered. That's why I was skeptical when they suggested creating a commission to chronicle what happened January 6th. We saw it. We lived it. America watched it. Many times on live television. And the videotapes have been played over and over and over again to dramatize what was happening as people were spraying the so-called bear spray in the faces of law enforcement, beating them with poles, crashing through the windows of the Capitol, breaking down the doors to come inside. We know what happened after we evacuated this chamber. The mob took over. Oh, they had their glory as they were taking pictures of one another, going through our desks here, acting like this was a holiday and that they were somehow patriots in that shameful moment. I question whether or not we needed a commission to establish this. It's there. But then last week, there was a vivid reminder that despite reality and despite the evidence, there are people who want to rewrite history. Let me note one in particular. Congressman Andrew Clyde, Republican of Georgia, at a House Oversight Committee hearing on the January 6th riot, said the House floor was not breached, that supporters of former President Donald Trump who stormed the Capitol behaved, quote, quote, in an orderly fashion. 
Congressman Clyde went on to say, if you look at the videotapes and you can see that this, there was an undisciplined mob, there were some rioters, some who committed acts of vandalism. And then he went on to say, watching the TV footage of those who entered the Capitol and walked through statuary halls showing people in an orderly fashion staying between the stanchions and ropes, taking vid videos and pictures, you know. That's what the congressman said. And then he said, if you didn't know that TV footage was a video from January the 6th, you would actually think it was a normal tourist visit. End of quote. Congressman Clyde went on to say, this was a quote rather from Congressman Paul Gozar, Republican of Arizona. The law enforcement officials in the Capitol were, quote, harassing peaceful patriots. So far, Mr. President, more than 440 people have been charged by our government with participating in this attack, 440 of Congressman Clyde's orderly tourists. Many have ties to right-wing extremist groups, the FBI has said, and they recounted that five people died in the events that led up to the attack. It is outrageous. We know President Trump and his followers have been pursuing the big lie when it comes to the results of the election. The president has finally embarrassed even some Republican followers with his extreme statements in that regard. But now his loyalists are turning on the facts and the videotapes and the reality of January 6th. This has to come to an end. The truth has to prevail. And this commission, which I understand Senator McConnell has now said he opposes, is absolutely necessary. A bipartisan commission to establish once and for all what did occur, as if we have to. But we do. Otherwise, Congressman Clyde, Congressman Gozar, and others will set out to rewrite history and blame other forces for being at work that day. I joined Senator Schumer in calling for the creation of this commission and demanding a vote on the floor of the United States Senate for its creation so that we can establish once and for all what did occur on January 6th and what must never happen again.